South Africa, and the more I'm here, uh, the more I interact with Brian and his company, uh, the more bullish I become. Um, I just came from a conference of uh, manufacturers that are engaged in the nuclear sector, and I'm very impressed. And part of my pitch to them was really, look, get going on this program now because there's a global nuclear renaissance and South Africa can be part of that. Are you finding that the technology though for the pebble bed modular reactor is up there with others in the world? Uh, I think for the application for which it's intended, it absolutely is. I think as a, particularly for a high temperature application, it's outstanding. Hmm. We did hear that there was a head to head in China and we didn't, hadn't come off too well. Uh, with that as far as the PBMR is concerned, that the Chinese have got their own version which is perhaps a little superior? Well, um, the Chinese have really embarked on a large-scale electrif electrification program, very much like what um, uh, ESCOM are doing now here in South Africa. The high temperature reactors are not part of that. It's really a traditional light water reactor technology. We went head to head with Arriva with the AP1000 and fortunately we came out on top. You came out on top. We well that's interesting because Serge Lafont told me they went head to head with you twice and they won both times. Well they just gave us a contract for four nuclear reactors uh, to be built. Uh, the most, it will be the first AP1000s built and um, um, the, the French got two. You, uh -huh. So you figure so, out who won. So on the, on the two, they, they, uh, they did win, but you won four. The, the French have uh, believe in this contract as well that they have got an advantage because they have a plant in Finland that is in the process of being built. It's, it's way behind schedule, mm. but they say that does give them an uh, inside uh, track. What do you think? Well, I think when you look at China, like South Africa, that was a market where um, France Inc. had been active for 20 years, yet China decided to go with a new technology, to go with Westinghouse. Um, it remains to be seen what ESCOM are going to do. So while there is an edge when you're in a market, uh, we came out on top in China. Uh, relative to Finland, I would say there are uh, problems fraught in, in every large-scale infrastructure project. And um, they've had theirs, and we look to avoid that. But um, uh, those are endemic, and that's one of the reasons why Murray and Roberts is so important to us. They have a great track record in large-scale infrastructure projects. And um, you know, we look to them to help us navigate in this market and, and be successful. Brian, where is the PBMR at the moment? How far is it from being properly commercially viable? I, th I, uh, I think some of the issues are more regulatory issues that have got to be resolved, EIAs, uh, safety case analysis. Uh, um, the development of the technology is very well advanced. Uh, you know, we won the contract to um, implement the the uh, demonstration plant and, and sub subject to licensing all further plants uh, a number of years ago. And so, you know, we've been busy with PBMR since about 1998, providing uh, um, engineering services and then more recently preparing for the implementation program. So, you know, the project is, um, is, is now subject to the regulatory environments that are necessary before you can commence construction on a nuclear project, and these are quite mm. severe. But what's going to give that breakthrough? What's going to let this South African technology be seen elsewhere? Well, I think it really is now to get, uh, to, get to this point where we can, we can commence with construction on site. You know, that is planned for uh, sometime in the not-too-distant future. And, uh, and once that happens and we've got the demonstration plant uh, in place and it's proven itself and it's got its licensing, etc., it will then take off from there. So There's you're a lot of confidence in the technology. Environmental it's environmental uh, and other nuclear regulatory um, approvals that are required. Mm. It's a very rigidly um, regulated environment, the nuclear sector. So once you've got the plant, presumably at Kuburg? It'll well? be at Kuburg, the first demonstration plant. Then you can bring, Westinghouse can bring uh, potential clients from other parts of the world and say, hey, look, it works. That's exactly right, uh, and, and I agree completely with what Brian was saying. The whole idea is to get this plant, the PBMR that is, to get this plant built, um, show that it works, um, and demonstrate its applications, and then um, go to the markets, and frankly, that's where uh, I believe Westinghouse's value added is in. We've moved it organizationally from being an R&D uh, uh, sort of technology into our mainstream commercial business. So that means it gets the marketing attention, the project management attention, and the regulatory attention that, that Brian was mm. referring to. But what happens if you don't win this contract from Eskim? Let's just say Eskim decide to go with the French. PBMR not good enough for South Africa, would it be good enough for you to pursue elsewhere? It, it, it might. Uh, as I said, what's attractive to me about it is the 
um, it, it are the high temperature applications. We like that very much. We also see, to be frank with you, synergy uh, between the Pebble Bed program and the Advanced Light Water Reactor program. That synergy starts with our two companies. I mean, we're working in both of the, the sets of projects here. And so we would look to combine those resources, but existed Pebble Bed already uh, with um, the kind of activity and initiatives that we need for the Advanced Light Water Rea Reactor program. Dan, you've got a lot on your plate. You, you uh, are responsible for the nuclear plants around the world that Westinghouse is building. And as I said earlier, you do half of them. Right. Are you finding that there's still considerably strong demand for new plants? Oh, yes, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I think we're all familiar with is carbon and the, the, what happens with global warming and what is the response on a national level to global warming. Second, a lot of the, um, a lot of the plants, the conventional fossil-fired units, are getting old. And so while some of them can be retrofitted at high cost, at some point it just doesn't make economic sense. And then within certain countries there are demographic shifts. Uh, population is coming in to certain regions of a country and uh, if, it's, if it's a far distance from a coal field, well then there's a need for additional electricity generation. Why then is the uranium price under so much pressure? Any thoughts? Why is it? Mm. Oh, well, I, I think you've got um, a burgeoning demand for nuclear electricity. Remember, plants have been built around the globe, really, mostly in Asia, uh, for the last 20 years, mm. uh, and, and that's really put a lot of upward pressure. But uranium was well over $100 a, a pound, and it's come down to $70 a pound, the spot price now, and some saying calling it down to $50 a pound. Would, was that just a cause of a bubble, perhaps, in the past? Uh, hard to say. Mm. Hard to say. I mean, my question would be, going forward, given the number of plants that are going to be built in, in China, perhaps India will be building more nuclear plants here in South Africa and elsewhere. I'd, I'd say the, uh, the bubble, if you want to call it that, the high prices are here to stay. Mm. Brian, looking specifically at Marion Roberts, it's almost mm. as though you're becoming specialists now in the power game. You've got uh, the big coal-fired plant near the Botswana border with mm. South Africa. And, and Bravo. Mm -hmm. and, and Bravo, Bravo as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think what well, Marion Roberts is a specialist in uh, industrial projects, major industrial projects. You know, we had a very successful uh, aluminium, aluminium smelter program through the, uh, through the 1990s and into the early 2000s. So this is the key area of our competence and capability. You know, for instance, we did build the Kubia uh, nuclear power station. So we were, we were the civil science. contractor on that. Well, in those days, you know, that, was the, <laughs> that was the technology. And, uh, and the technology is originally Westinghouse technology in any event. So, um, so, you know, this is our area of expertise. We are a multidisciplinary uh, engineering contractor, so we can bring together the electrical, the mechanical, the civil and structural, etc. cetera. And, uh, and so the name of the game at the moment is power, and this is where we focused a lot of our attention over the last couple of years to prepare ourselves for this. What about Chancellor House and all the publicity that's been around there? There's an ANC front that's now participating with you and... Well, I think this is an issue around our main contract or our partner, which is uh, Hitachi, you know, that we're not really involved in that. That's not our, you know, we as Murray and Roberts are South African, we're fully empowered in our own right, etc. And we've engaged the project in that sense. So, you know, we do, not see, we do not see enough. anything um, uh, sinister mm. in that particular process at no. all, and, uh, and therefore we were quite comfortable to make the decision to proceed in that partnership. Isn't it bothering you, though, that there's all this controversy? Not really, happening? no. Because you think it's... It's uh, storm in a teacup. Well, I, I don't know. You know, I think in fact we, our view is that uh, is that uh, there is nothing, there's nothing sinister, and therefore we're quite comfortable to proceed uh, with that partnership. Mm. Your share price, I suppose, all construction company prices have been under pressure lately. Well, all prices. You, that? All prices. No, not at all. You know, we've had a good run. You know, mm. we're still significantly higher than we have been, and uh, I think the market just needs a little bit of uh, confidence now that uh, the future is looking good. I think order books are, are growing for all companies, and we'll see as we come through the half, half year seasonal reporting that it's going to be good news across the board. Well, it's good to hear Dan being so confident, but uh, South African businessmen lately have lacked in that a great deal. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, that I necessarily am part of that. You know, I think that we're a resilient country. We've, uh, we've proven in a number of circumstances that we were able to overcome short, uh, problems. I think that everybody's now working towards finding solutions. Um, you know, the energy situation is troublesome, but most organizations are finding their way around through this at the moment. And, uh, you know, we've got these skills issues you're talking about in the accounting sector. We see them in engineering as well. But, you know, there's a significant resource in South Africa. And our critical challenge now is how do we convert the resource we have in South Africa into the skills that we need to do the work that we have to do. And, you know, we've done it before. So we're fairly confident that we'll, we'll be able to do so again. Brian Bruce, Dan 